<clears throat> I want to take you somewhere where there's a 37 foot high monster lurking over the mass pike like a giant green Christmas tree. You may wonder where the cars that are passing by the monster are going. Are they headed to see a Japanese movie? Or are they headed to see this monster? Do you know this monster? Can you guess where this monster lives? If you guess the oldest ballpark in Major League Baseball, then you guessed right. This monster lives at Fenway Park in Boston. Today I want to share some history, let you in on some little known facts, and tell you more about the place someone once called the Little Van Bonsimo Ballpark. I know a lot about Fenway Park, concerned in my house we go at least once a year during the season to catch a soundscape or in the off season. And in the off season. It is the oldest ballpark in all the land. It comes with lots of history, unique traditions, and is not just baseball. You might be thinking where Fenway got its name. Fenway Park got its name from being in the Fens neighborhood of Boston. The word Fens means marsh. This means the ballpark was built on marshy land between 1911 and 1912. The park stood out by itself. It was the only building there at the time. From 1901 until 1911, the Red Sox played at Huntington Avenue grounds, but their owner after the 1911 season wanted a new ballpark just for them. Because at the time, they were sharing that park with the Boston Braves, which are modern-day Atlanta Braves. So in 1912, Fenway Park opened to an attendance of 27,000 fans with the Sox playing the New York Highland, present-day New York Yankees. Boston won an extra inning in 65. Boston played in several World Series in the early days of Fenway from 1912 to 1918. Then in 1919, no World Series would be won in Boston for many years to come. What about the Green Monster? The prelude to the Green Monster was the left field fence called Duffy's Cliffs, which was originally erected to prevent fans from... Enter in the field of play. This was named for Boston player Duffy Lewis. It also included a 10-foot high mound that formed an incline in front of the left field wall. The fence was damaged by two fires in the late 1920s and 1933. The basic structure of the wall, as we know today, was built with a green coat of paint and light towers during the 1947 season. That green coat of paint replaced an ag-covered wall that was previously there when the park opened. In Fenway's early years, no night games were played in Boston. It was not until 1947 that light towers were installed to make way for night baseball in Boston. The Red Sox were the third to last team to install lights. The first night game was played on 61347 against the other Sox. You can see the two light towers on top of the wall coming down I-90, otherwise known as the Mass Pike. So you can see it. If the highway is here, if you're on the highway, you can see it. Over here. At present, there are no advertisements adorn the light towers because it is considered a historic landmark. Uh, there's also the pesky pole in right field, the shortest home run distance in baseball, 302 feet. And then on the left, there's the car, there's the fist pole that's 300. That's 310 feet from home plate, named for two Red, former Red Sox players. The season has gone up significantly from 27,000 to 37,631. I forgot to mention there also is the triangle in center field, which is shaped like a triangle. But it's still framed for a smaller figure, as was the case when it opened in the early 20th century. The best seats are the Green Monster seats, which were built in 2003, and the seating prices vary based on the time of year and who is in town. Uh, the press box is also cool. It was a small wooden area. I've had the luxury of me and the Nelson broadcasters. So why Fenway? With its unique features and so much history, Fenway Park should be on everyone's bucket list. If you're not a baseball fan, Fenway always works. 
And there you go.